Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, I've got an exciting new build for you guys. Uh, today, we are going to start building the, now this is a long one, the 112 scale Tamiya Honda CBR 1000 Fireblade. <laughs> long, long title on it there, but a absolute stunning piece of workmanship that Tamiya has come out with. Now, this is a soon to be released kit. In fact, the kit is due out as of the time of this filming right here in about about a month times right now. So it's uh, look for it on the horizon. We even have it up on our pre-order on our website at andyshq.com. And also during this build, we are going to be using Tamiya's new LP series of paint. Now their LP series are their lacquer paints, but uh, the actual body panels are called out with the, uh, the LP45 and the LP21, the red and the blue, so they match exactly to the decals and been wanting to try these out anyway. Now these paints are also, were supposed to be due out in the United States last year, because I know many of you around the world already have these, but here we do not yet. But uh, it was supposed to be out last year, they got delayed a little bit, and now we're hearing that they might be out by late summer. It's all a labeling issue on that, but I've got to try these out a little bit, and they're spectacular paints. Very excited using these on such a nice motorcycle. Now, obviously this is a little bit different than what I normally build on the channel. You know, we do a lot of military stuff, armor, things like that. So this video, this, you have to apologize why it's taking a little bit longer because this is a whole, I haven't built a motorcycle in about two years. So it's a little, little bit different getting back to doing all the shiny surfaces again. So very excited about doing it. So let's get started. Okay, very excited to start uh, building this new motorcycle kit. First thing I want to point out to you too is I have all of the lacquer paints from Tamiya. Uh, I know they're supposed to be available in the United States and they've been delayed a little bit longer, but we have samples of all these. So we have the actual colors that Tamiya calls out, so we'll be using those in the paint job. And first of all, we have the engine pieces all ready to go here. We've all cut out and sanded. And as you can imagine, I was doing a little dry fitting, and they fit pretty well, we'll just say. <laughs> so we're going to start building up the engine. And we've already installed this rod through the middle here, too. That's a little, a little brace support. We're going to let this dry, and then it'll lock this other portion of it into place right there. But we want this to fully dry first, so we get a nice square, well, straight engine, we'll call it there. And I know there's a touch more gluing we need to do down up inside there, too. So, as you can see, once that gets in there, I think that'll probably be dry enough that we can just dry fit this in here and show you. See how intricate this engine is. And it's a very, very tight fit, fits well. Oh, I guess I gotta get that little rod in there too. There, ah, that's how it goes in. So those two pieces will snap right together just like that. We'll glue that, and then we can glue the back of the, well, I guess it might be the back, might be the front too, but this portion of the engine into place. And then finally, the oil pan down below here, and then the heads. Now we're gonna be leaving a lot of the little accessory pieces off, because we're gonna obviously be, have to paint this. And this is painted a couple of different colors, mainly titanium silver, which we have right here. We'll use that on it, but I think it's going to build up to be a beautiful piece. So I'm going to get these pieces, let them dry a little bit, glue them all together, and show you what it looks like before we start painting. Okay, we've got the main portion of the engine glued together, and now we are going to first put our, our coats of paint on it. And this is going to be the first time I've used to me as lacquer paints. So let me just first show you this. Open up another brand new bottle here. 
and you can see there's hopefully you can see there's there's a pretty good amount of air gap inside there now the lacquers we want to thin down maybe just a little bit more than we normally would so I've taken two squirts of lacquer thinner with a pipette and we filled it right to basically where the bottle starts to rise up so we're gonna try shaking this up right now and seeing how the paint goes on with that see if it's too thin or too thick so let's give that a shot As you can see, we've got the silver all painted on the engine. And actually, I should say that there are actually two different colors of silver. You might not be able to see it as well on camera. It's a little bit more noticeable in person, but this center area right here is a titanium silver, and then there's a brighter silver on the top and bottom. That in person, just slight, but you can notice it. We've also gone ahead and attached some of the other parts and then hand brushed the, uh, the bolt heads on all of these little Hopefully you can see them pretty well on there with those and on the back here. And I have to say, I absolutely love these new Tamiya paints. They are spectacular the way they paint. Now, you watched me airbrush the engine a minute ago, but I also wanted to try them out hand brushing. And this little part right here has been hand brushed with them and they worked beautifully. In fact, we don't have any brush strokes on it. We were able to, with the viscosity of the paint, paint the bolt heads very nicely and it just did a wonderful job. And that is true with all of these hoses as well. Uh, just in spectacular paint, the way it, it dried. So now with this all set up, and also because it dries so fast, I was able to handle this within a couple of seconds, basically, after, uh, after we painted it. So we've got this all ready to go now. We've got all these other little accessory pieces like these hoses I showed you. I actually gotta do a little bit more painting on the bottom of that one, but very very easy to do i'm going to go ahead and attach all of these hoses on it now and i'll show you what the engine looks like in the next step and they're pretty easy straightforward stuff everything to me it does is designed to just like kind of fit right into place so like that piece is going to line up right in there and the little bolt heads will line up just as you would expect them in there so we're going to get these parts glued on and we're going to come back and show you what it all looks like once we get the end on show you how this hose goes into place too because even with that glue on there, the Tamiya glue goes right through it and doesn't present the problem gluing on the parts even after it's been sprayed with the lacquer. And as you can see, we've got the hoses mounted into place. Also I've got the throttle body up here mounted as well as one of the lines that come off of it. Now I've already attached the, uh, the line right here for this piece and this is going to get glued right into place just like this there's a little pin that holds it into place there and as you can see the engine is coming along nicely and actually pretty quickly as well very very nice detail okay we're building up the frame now there is a little support that slides right inside here this is actually molded up as one big piece and so is this and we can go ahead and glue both sides of these together with that little brace in place there. You can see it'll lock together just the way it does there. Then once that is fully set up, we will be able to slide this piece down through the middle here, glue that into place. And then there's one other little bracket that'll be glued back here. Now, once I get all of these pieces glued in, the entire frame is painted up with their new LP paints or the, the lacquer paints, number 40, which is a uh, metallic black. And we're gonna go ahead, once this dries, paint the entire thing metallic black, and then it'll become time to screw the engine up using little screws in here. But let's first take care of this, and we're gonna come back before we put the engine and show you what it looks like. Now with the frame painted, we can go ahead and install the engine. And the engine gets installed by sliding up inside of here, just like that. And then there are four tiny little screws that we need to uh, install. 
and they are very different sizes, each one of them. And luckily, to me, it gives you this little schematic right here, which is very helpful because what you can do is just take your screw, line it up to it, make sure it's the right size, and that way you know you're putting the right screw in the right place because there's a four millimeter, two and a half millimeter, and then a bunch of eight millimeters that we need to get right in here. It also includes a little tiny screwdriver with it. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and install it because it's just gonna be screwing four little screws into place, but the camera's kind of in the way and I don't want one of these screws going flying across the, uh, the room and disappearing in the carpet. So I'll go ahead and attach those and I'll show you what it looks like right after I get it done. And here is the engine mounted inside the frame that we painted the metallic black. You can see how it's all fitting together there. Now, the next thing we have to do is put the, uh, the fender in place. Now, I've gone ahead and already attached all of the lines that, get, that need to be put in there, but there is a tail lights uh, that need to get on there, as well as a little insert piece that we just painted, so we're letting that dry. Now, this piece actually clicks into place underneath and without glue. And at first I wasn't going to put this on because the lights are going into place, but it kind of dawned on me, it's not like building a tank at all. We're actually painting all of these pieces as we go. So we won't have to mask off the, uh, the clear parts on that. So I will go ahead and put those into place as soon as the other portion of it is dry. We also need to go ahead and glue these two pieces together here with two of these little micro poly caps inside. And this is gonna be where the, uh, the coil spring is mounted for the back of the bike and we have to put the coils or excuse me have to put the uh, poly caps in first and then we can start painting all these little accessory pieces and then once that's done we can go ahead and start building up the uh, swing arm here that will hold the wheel and that'll get all attached here too so what i'll do is i'm going to these are just three little parts that get glued together we're going to put this together and paint the entire thing I think it's semi-gloss black. I, I know it's semi-gloss black already here, but we obviously want to paint all the parts on it. So I'll look that what, what that is after we get this painted. And we'll also assemble all these little pieces, and then we'll show you how it all goes together once all these pieces dry. Okay, we can put the underside of the fender on here, making sure we get all the wiring up inside. And then that little snap means that it's in place. We don't have to actually glue that at all. We've also glued this portion of the arm together here. Now we're going to build up the uh, spring that we need to put in here. And first of all, I'll show you this. There's a, a metal rod that goes inside this piece and then gets attached just like this in here, which we'll glue that in a minute. Now we've had to go ahead and open up the uh, the accessory part that pack that we have for this. So we have our pre-done orange spring. We'll put that in there and then we mount the other side just like that. And that is where we put the little poly cap in there. So we've got that whole little assembly ready to attach. So we'll get that all glued together now. And also, I just got done, as you guys saw, putting on the silver paint we used from Tamiya's new LP series. Works really good too. And I even actually put some really hardcore uh, masking tape, regular just tan masking tape, as you probably saw on the table there, and it didn't pull any of the paint off on either side. So though it's very, very durable, and I love this new paint. Okay, let me show you where we're at right now. We've gone ahead and started to install all of the decals on uh, certain parts of the motorcycle here that make it really stick out. Also went back and put them like on the oil filter, things like that. And as you can see, we've got this painted up now and 
it's kind of a, a tricky little process we have to work on right here. And not tricky as in hard, but tricky as it's going to be difficult to try to do this with the camera in the way. But I'll see if I can kind of walk you through it. So we've got this assembly right here. And we've got to actually get this to come up from underneath here and then get these little swing arms right here to bolt on to those little things with the camera in the way. So obviously once the camera's gone, this will be no problem at all getting the little screwdriver and mounting those right into place. And then once we get that mounted in, I started working on the, uh, the chain and we've just went and painted the entire thing and I just put a coat of, uh, of the black panel liner on it to kind of highlight a little of this. And then before we, do, after we do that, we're going to go ahead and rub it down with a little bit of like a metal metal polishing powder to make some of the chain parts really stick out. And then of course you guys saw me put together the uh, the wheel assembly in the back. And when I actually put it on, I put it on backwards. But we noticed that right away and we've gone and flipped it out and put the tire on correctly. So once that gets put into place, then we can mount the entire back assembly together. But let me go ahead and screw this on right here, the, uh, the spring onto that little area. And then we'll come back and I'll show you how the whole thing kind of clicks together. Okay, we've got the uh, spring assembly attached inside there. And that was a little bit more difficult than I thought it was going to be, uh, mainly because my fingers were having a hard time holding on to those little screws. And even though they're, the screwdriver's magnetized, it still took a, a couple minutes and a couple tries, we'll call it. So now we're going ahead and putting the, the chain in place, and there's, there's a break in the chain. That's how you're able to slide this inside here. Now, with that being done, we don't glue that part, so we've got to be very, very careful. We have to slide the wheel into place here and let the wheel get slid into place hopefully because this brake is not attached either to none of these parts actually get glued into each other so we have to be very careful and kind of like yeah there we go get it to slide into place oh and there's there's the little snap we're looking for and then well I did have it here a second ago our big long screw is going to go in through here and secure everything together. So I'll go ahead and tighten that down right now and I will show you how it mates up with the rest of the body. Okay, we've got that screwed into place. Now we take this little break and you hear that little click, that's going to lock it up inside there. Then we can run the line down to it. Now there are two cover plates for both sides of this screw piece that we're going to paint and put on in a little bit. But uh, before we do that, we're going to go ahead and attach it to the actual frame of the motorcycle. So this needs to be slid in here very carefully. And you can see there's a connection point down here where the shock is going to attach. And then there's going to be two screws that attach the actual arm of the back low, of the rear suspension, excuse me, into place. So we got to get all these lined up at the same time. Oh, actually just like that. That actually worked pretty well. So I can go ahead now, put the screws into place, and that should lock all this together. Then we can start hooking up the uh, the lines that are that go to the rear on this and also start putting some of those caps on. So I'm going to take a little bit of time now, put all of those uh, screws in here and get it all hooked together, and I'll show you what it looks like once it's done. I thought I'd take a quick second and just show you how this actually goes together. So we've We've attached the screw in here that holds the uh, the shock. Now we've installed a long screw, as long as the actual one for the rear tire in here. Holding that in place, there's this little tiny sleeve that is going to have that is threaded, and making sure that doesn't fall out the back, which it's starting to. Hold that in place. We lock that sleeve in there, and then we can start to tighten this down. And hopefully it grabs. Got to make sure the wheel is perfectly straight. There we go. And it's pulling that little sleeve inside, as you can see right there. And spring works. And then all we have to do now is glue the uh, sprocket right here onto the actual engine, so it all lines up. Okay, we're working on the uh, the tailpipes right now. We've gone ahead and glued up the four pipes that lead into the main here. And once all this gets dried and we do some sanding on it, we can go ahead and attach 
the muffler onto the back here. We'll glue this portion in and then finally the end cap just like that and of course there's also a little bracket we need to glue onto the the top of it just like that. But just to give you an idea how it's all going to mate into place here it is so nice th the engineering that is done on this so you just line up those four snap that in everything lines up just the way it's supposed to so what we have to do now is I gotta do some sanding on this get all those parts glued together and then we can paint all of this as well so I'm gonna work on that off camera and I'll show you what it looks like when we're about to attach it there is the piece all painted up you can go ahead and attach that in there just like that We've got our little tiny, see I'm just on the edge of the camera right there, our little micro screws that we'll go ahead and attach that into place. And with this done, we can now work on the radiator that is going to sit right here in front. Okay, we've gone ahead a little bit here. We have the radiator in place now. We've uh, painted up all of the little fittings. There is one final hose that we can attach now to. That just a little bit of glue and it'll lock right into place there. And let me put this right down here for one second while I'll show you what we're working on next. We're also working on the headlight assembly and it comes with a mask that we're going to burnish down in here because all of this is clear but this portion of it needs to be painted black. So we'll go ahead and put those masks on both and then it literally just pops into place and there's two little screws and it's basically done. Now, with that being said, we can start working on the front tire, which is going to take all of like 30 seconds to or less to put together. Actually, there we go. And we're painting up the brake on it right now. That'll go on both sides of that. And then as soon as I'm done getting those put into place, which is just a matter of gluing those on, we can start working on the front forks, which is the uh, Tamiya aftermarket kit. So you can see we have real anodized aluminum. Pull this out here tubes and I think it's going to add a nice nice look to it and one other quick thing I'll show you we're going to paint obviously the rest of the front fork here uh, the way I've cut these off here we've cut them off the top and then this way we can actually paint them right in place here because the inside of this part is going to be actually inside the tube so we can use this as a nice little handle to uh, airbrush all of these into the bright silver that they require so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get that little hose glued on get the other portion of this uh, masked off and then just quickly painted black and then I will show you how the uh, front forks go together. Okay it's time to build up the front forks we've also gone ahead and put the the brakes onto the front wheel got those all painted up and very very excited that Tamiya drilled out all of the holes for us in advance so that's some, something we have to do which takes forever and this is one of them already built up right here and I'll kind of just quickly show you how this goes together so I've painted this with the uh, the new uh, lacquer paints the silver the shiny silver or sparkling silver excuse me and we put a little poly cap on the top there then there is a metal sleeve that goes on to there and with that poly cap there we also put on if I can grab it this little black sleeve as well and then the whole thing just slides together just like that and that is the whole thing and then it is going to get mounted inside this bracket which we will go ahead and use super glue to glue all that together and that is also going to be true of all these little anodized pieces that are going to make up the uh, the handlebars so you can see all these little pieces they are going to get dropped into place on each one of those and then with the tiniest amount of super bowl super glue excuse me as possible we're going to get that in there and get it all glued together so i'm going to do all that off camera so we can stack them up without having them fire all over the place and i will show you what it looks like once we start to assemble all these pieces Okay, we've got the handlebars assembled and I've also gone ahead and done a little bit of a burning effect on the metal here on the pipes and we accomplished that by just misting on a little bit of Tamiya's clear yellow and a little bit of the titanium gold 
And then after that dry, we took some Tamiya black panel liner to make all those little things kind of pop back out again. Now, I said I was going to go ahead and assemble the front forks, but before we can do that, we need to actually attach the front fender. And because the fender is painted, that means it's probably a good time to paint all of the, uh, the red parts you know, while we have the gun out. So I'm going to get all those prepped, and we're going to start painting all those pieces right now. Okay, here are all the body panels painted up in the uh, the two colors that they call out, the uh, red and the blue color. I do have to go back and paint these two body panels in blue. The instructions call out red, but I did not notice in the box that it called out that there was an error in there and these two panels need to be painted blue, but that shouldn't be a problem at all. These lacquer paints work really well. In fact, we paint the entire piece of this red and then painted the blue over it and it came out wonderful just the way it is there. So. Uh, in a few minutes I'll go ahead and do that, but right now we have the fender, front fender ready to go, so now we can build this up and then attach the forks and the whole front end basically of the motorcycle. So I will go ahead and super glue these up because it is metal with molding with plastic and we'll also mount the front fender inside there as well and then we'll show you how it fits in with the front wheel and mounts actually to the actual bike itself. So I'm going to take care of that and we'll show you that in a few secs. Okay, I'm going to show you how the front forks go together a little bit easier. If you actually attach one whole side, glue it all into place, and then it's a little bit easier to actually fit this one up inside because you've got to mount glue in here and here and then of course in here. And if you try stacking it all together, it makes it a little bit difficult. But you can see how that just locks right into place. So I'm going to go ahead and put the glue on both sides of that as well as up in here. And then we'll be able to slide the wheel in and attach the long screw, which I'm going to go ahead and do all that right now, and then I'll show you how it all fits right into the actual bike. Okay, we've got the front forks assembled. You can see that long rod will slide right up inside there. And with that put on, we can go ahead and attach the handlebars, just like this. And then there is one long screw right here that we need to run down here and it's self tapping so it'll go right inside yeah there it goes and make sure all that lines up and then we can just screw that on and we have our front forks attached now we we haven't attached the brakes or any of the brake lines or anything like that we'll do that in a little bit uh, i just figured it'd be easier to do it after it's all in place Okay, we've gone ahead and installed the, uh, the display screen, and now we are going to go ahead and put the, uh, the air cleaner in, and that is going to get mounted right into place there. We've attached the two wires that are also needed to be put in there before we glued it all together. Now what we're going to do is, because there are so many decals on this motorcycle, I started putting on the decals on like the fuel tank, which will be the next step that we glue into place here. But before we put any more of them on, what I think I'm going to do is start attaching some of the panels. And the reason I say that is because when we put this one in, like this, it locks down into place yeah, like that, and it'll cover that over. But then what we want to make sure we do is when we attach the next piece, that the decal that goes like the certain direction, they all line up properly. And I don't want to put the decals on in the individual pieces and then find out we messed that up. So these are all get put into place with screws so we don't have to actually glue them down at all. So we can screw them into place and then once we get all the decals on we can pull all the pieces off and put our coats of clear coat on, get a nice finish on it and still get all the decals to line up. So we're going to go ahead and glue the, uh, the air cleaner down and then we're going to start screwing some of the panels into place. Okay, had a little bit of a heart attack because after I screwed this little blue piece into place you can see that red stripe of the tank and I thought, oh man, I messed up and put the decal too high. But after looking at the instructions, uh, it is actually supposed to be that way. Because right here, there's that red stripe on both sides of the bike. So <laughs> heart attack avoided right there. Now, all these parts are attached only by screws or just 
everything you know put into place so any of these parts can be taken off we can do all of our final gloss coat and things like that on it but really want to see how the whole bike looks like when it kind of goes together and how these rest of these decals are going to go on so I'm going to continue to put the uh, the molding pieces on or the body panels on and I'll kind of show you what it looks like once it all gets put into place okay we've got most of the body panels in place and we're just going over now and putting our third coat of mark fit on these decals and they're gradually starting to wrap right around like they're supposed to one good thing about actually putting all these panels on I would actually judged this one decal to be in the wrong spot I actually had it further up the uh, the side of the bike here but after comparing it to the fuel tank you can tell that that blue line is supposed to line up so very glad I put the panels in place before I decal them now the next one we're going to be doing is we need to build up these side panels and these will lock right into place right here and get glued together and that will be one whole side of the bike this actually goes on the other side but uh, you get the idea on that so we've got uh, one more red decal which is going to fill in this blue area right in through here but I'm going to wait till this decal is completely down it took uh, three coats on the other side to get it to completely wrap and be smooth and let it dry so I'm going to do the same here with that we have also got this one all ready to go that'll slide up on the bottom of the bike we've also put these little silver badges here and those are the the base coat that you need to put down before you put the little Honda wing symbol on there so now it's just a matter of just going ahead and putting the rest of the decals on there are not too many more there was the the main decal for the front here and you can see we're also getting the uh, uh, rear view mirrors on on the side there as well a little bit of a residue we got to put one more little coat you can see it's just a tiny little wrinkle right on the front of that one but this one was kind of difficult to get on too to make sure that you get that little band of red all the way around that decal but a uh, little work and it goes on well so I'm gonna get the rest of these decals put into place and we'll show you what the parts look like all assembled quick little builders tip too when you're going ahead and putting the decals once you get the decal dipped in water go ahead and take your finger and knock away the the number because inevitably they they disintegrate on there and they'll leave little lines uh, black lines on your white decals or some of your other colors that are very noticeable so that way if you take them off completely before you put the decal on you don't have to worry about that here we are guys here is our completed model uh, I want to point out a couple of uh, cool things about the way this bike goes together as well first of all as you see inside here we've got the brake lines attached to the front here and just to let you know as a little builders tip the entire front wheel comes off of this kit because there's only a poly cap inside each one of the forks and the whole thing just slides off really easy that you can attach all the brake lines and then you just slide it right back up inside no problems at all also show you the uh, the reflector right here I went ahead and used to me as new metallic orange and I think it did a fabulous job it really really captures the the look of a uh, reflector we've also gone ahead and put the little uh, Brembo decal on there as well as all the other decals you can see on here now when it came to attaching the body panels the only body panel that actually gets screwed to it is this main one right here this panel right here and the very bottom all kind of click into place based on attaching this and then the front so basically you can remove all of these panels if you wanted to uh, to make it uh, visible to show the inside of the bike if you wanted to see the engine we aren't going to do that right now because you guys watch me build the whole thing so you know what the engine actually looks like on it but as you can imagine it was a great build I had a lot a lot of fun doing that there is a little bit of difficulty obviously with the painting and decaling because there is a lot to it getting it all lined up but if you take your time with it it comes out pretty nicely so uh, I know this has been a little bit longer than normal video so we won't talk too too much more about it uh, other than the fact that it's a great kit and would highly recommend it I want to thank you guys as always for watching and please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming